Happy New Year, everyone. I'm back with another Python and PubMed tutorial. And this time we're gonna use Python to import a list of research manuscripts and find out who has cited these manuscripts. So I think you'll really like this. Now I'm gonna move quickly in this video because I already did a PubMed Python video on running queries and extracting manuscripts and all that. If you haven't checked that out, I have a link above. So we have a few requirements. The first thing that we need, we need the proper Python module. So if you're using Windows, you wanna just open the command prompt here and we wanna use pip and we're gonna need a few things here. We're gonna need pandas and we're gonna need biopython. So you can just type in install pandas, biopython, no comma or anything like that. And I already have these, but I just wanna demonstrate this for you. So let's go ahead and X out of here. All right, before we do anything else, we also need to get a list of manuscripts. So let's go to PubMed. The late Jimmy Carter actually had a few manuscripts that come up in PubMed. I thought his case was perfect because one was not cited and the other two were. And so you can kind of see the difference between manuscripts that have citations and those that don't. So let's go ahead and click on save right here. What we want to do is create a CSV file here. So create file. You want to do all results on this page or if you have a bunch, you can just do all results, whatever. But I only have three, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm downloading that. I'm gonna move this into the folder where I wanna run the Python script. And I'm just gonna change this to PMIDs, just for simplicity here. Now, if you wanna look at the file real quick, this is what we got, okay, real simple. The thing we really need to worry about though is this PMID right here. And that's a unique identifier for a manuscript. And that's what we're gonna reference in the code. And that's how we're gonna get citations by this PMID. Because titles are not always unique, but PMIDs always are, okay? So let's X out of here. Don't need to save anything. Let's create a new Python file, okay? We wanna save that here in this folder. Where we saved our CSV file. Let's go to file, new file, create this new Python file. File, save as, let's just put it in there right away. We're gonna just call this get citations, call it whatever you want. Hit save, okay? And there you go, we have it in there. So now I wanna put in our code. All right, first and foremost, we wanna import our two modules right here. Pandas is used for manipulating data, importing, exporting, and so on. So we need that for our CSV. This is BioPython right here, and we're gonna use this entree part here. And basically, it's a catalog system that helps us search for and fetch specific articles or data from PubMed. You might hear me say NCBI API or PubMed API. In the context of this video, it's basically the same thing. All right, let's take a look at this. This is the meat of everything right here. And so what we wanna do is first, Make sure we have a good email. And I mentioned that before. So that's this right here. Make sure you put in a real email. And basically PubMed wants to track who's using their service. And I wanna make sure people are doing it responsibly. Now right here, this whole try thing right here is basically if we find a good PMID, we have the information we need, bam, get all the details, get the citations, and then be done with it. Now, if something does go wrong, we're gonna get this message right here. Basically we're doing this so if there is a problem, it doesn't stop the whole script. Now what's going on right here is essentially we're querying PubMed to find articles citing the given PMID. So in our CSV, it's gonna go through rule one, two, three, and so on. Now this right here, this is just reading and organizing data in a Python friendly format. And then this is just closing out that connection. So I'm gonna go over some of these pretty quickly because I covered a lot of this in my last PubMed Python video, but just a little refresher if you need it. Now, not every single manuscript is gonna have a citation. So that's what this is for right here. So we can't just grab a zero from manuscript in the API. So what we're doing is we're gonna return a zero once it doesn't find something. And right here, we're gonna pull out all the PMIDs of articles that do cite our particular manuscript. So citing one of Jimmy Carter's manuscripts. And then right here, we're just gonna count how many of those are there. All right, this section is pretty important. So what we have right here this is gonna store details about any of the citing articles for any given PMID. So one of the three that we are gonna import for that CSV file, okay? Now right here, this checks if there's any PMIDs of citing articles and if none exists, it's gonna go ahead and skip the rest of the code here. Now this is a lot packed into one line, but good stuff here. So basically what we're gonna do, is gonna fetch detailed information about the citing articles from PubMed. So first of all, we need to reference PubMed as a database and there's tons of other ones that you can use too. For example, if you do genetic research, you're gonna probably wanna use something better than PubMed, but you know, whatever. So we're gonna use PubMed right there. And what's going on right here is we're gonna join all citing PMIDs into a single string separated by commas, and that's required for the query. 
And then this is just going to return an XML format. We can parse that really easily. But essentially, right here, this has the fetched article details, and we're going to parse it. And then, like before, this is just going to close that connection to PubMed after we fetch the data. So right here, we have a for loop right here, and this is going to loop through each citing article in the fetch data. All right, so right here, this extracts the PMID of the citing article. Now right here, this extracts detailed article information. So this allows us to get the title, the journal, the author, stuff like that. And so right here, we're actually picking out the title. And we have some fallbacks here. So if the article title doesn't exist, it's not there or whatever, we're going to get an NA. Otherwise, we might get an error. We don't want that. We're doing the same thing for journal, okay? We get the name of the type of journal. And similarly, if it doesn't exist, we're going to get an NA there. Better than nothing, okay? Now, authors can be a little bit trickier. So basically, if we have data in the author list section of the XML, we're going to get the last name, and we're going to get the first name or forename. And similarly, we have a fallback right here, okay? It's just going to be blank basically. So basically, if we have at least a last name, at least a first name or forename, we're going to put them together, and then we're going to add them to this list right here. Now again, this is also a list. See, that's that right there. So we're going to throw on the PMID, the citing PMID. So this is the Jimmy Carter article right there. This is who's citing that article. And then this is the citing title, the citing journal. Now, the author's part might seem complicated. What we're doing is we're appending the first and the last name to the author's list here. So if there are two authors for a citing paper, we're going to join the two authors into one string separated by a comma and then throw it into the citing articles list like we did with the citing PMID, the title, the journal, and so on. So you want to get more stuff? You, you certainly can. You can get dates. You can get mesh terms, stuff like that, whatever you want to do. But we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to add these in there, okay? Now, this is going to return two things. It's going to get a count of citations per article, and it's going to provide a list of those. So one's going to count how many times one of Jimmy Carter's manuscripts were cited. It's going to give us a number, and the other is going to actually provide a list of all of those. All right, wow, we got through a lot of that. So this section handles a lot of the importing and exporting of data including our CSV we got from PubMed. And here's our email, which is needed so PubMed knows who we are. So here's two more lists right here, and I'll get to that in a second. All right, so this right here, this is importing those PMIDs that we imported, the Jimmy Carter PMIDs, and this data right here, that refers to this right here. And that's our CSV. Bam, you can see the connection right there, okay? So it's going to go through each one of those PMIDs, and it's going to get the number of articles that cite the Jimmy Carter article PMID, and it's going to retrieve those details about the citing articles, like the title, journal, and authors. So this right here, our function, that's all this right here. So now it's finally coming in handy. That's what it is right there. Now you might be wondering, why are we making PMID a string? There's just really no reason not to make it a string. You're not going to be adding PMID numbers. So just make it a string. So again, that's our email right there. So PubMed can keep track of what we're doing and make sure we're not being out of control there. In this section, we're appending the count of the citing articles as well as the individual details of these citing articles into their own respective list right here. And these will get exported into their own files. And this gets the counts per PMID. So we want to see how many times an article has been cited. That's going to go right there. And then this, this will actually list all those so you can see the names of the title, they can have the PMID, and so on. That's going to go right there in all citing articles. This is basically just creating a new column called citation count in our data set. Okay, this is exporting it right there. So that's this, output combined. And this is just printing and saying that it's been saved. Now this is going to be our separate CSV, and this is going to have the actual detail information about the article. So it's not going to have the number of times our three PMIDs that we imported were cited. It's going to include our original PMID, the one that we imported, so one of the three. And then it's going to provide the citing PMID and the citing title and so on. And again, you can add more fields. And then right here, we're basically making sure that we're adding these columns right here. And then right here, we're exporting. And I should be clear too, so index false right here. Basically like row IDs, 
I just put false. I don't think we really need one. If you want that, just change it to true. I just don't think it's really necessary. It doesn't really add any value to what we're doing. Okay, and then this is just a printed message that, hey, the articles were saved. All right, so let's do one thing here. Why don't I change my email right here? So I'll put my channel's email. All right, and then let's go ahead and run this and let's see what we got. So again, PMIDs right here. So that's that right there. Let's go ahead and run this. See what we got. Okay, so as expected, one of those PMIDs did not have any citing articles and the others did. So let's take a look. We have two files that we've got to look at. So this tells us how many times that they were cited of our three, okay? So all this is basically the same as that file that we generated from PubMed, but what we did is we got the citation count and we merged it together and we made a new file basically, okay? So this one has zero, this has one, and this has 12. So let's actually keep this open. Let's open this one. We can actually see details on those articles that cited. Okay, so we had the 12 right here, and we have the one right here, okay? So maybe we should just look at these side by side. You can see on the left a total of 13 citing articles among the three manuscripts that Jimmy Carter authored, and you can see them individually on the right side. Okay, so I know you're wondering, like, what the heck do we do about this? This is a weird encoding issue. Sometimes you get this with CSVs. It's very fixable. So let's go back to our code real quick. Pretty simple fix. Usually you just go encoding equals something like Latin 1. Oftentimes this will fix the issue. And let's go ahead and put that over here as well. Just in case, unlikely, but it's typically going to be an issue over here, not here. But whatever. Let's run it and see. There you go. That's a lot better. It handled some of these characters like that and that a lot better. Since this is already on the long side, as these API videos tend to be, I'm going to stop right here. But let me know if you have any questions or thoughts or what you thought in general about this video. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing. I'll catch you all later. Take care.